What's up guys? I managed to get my 30 series cards stuffed into the Miner Dude case. And in the open air I got my 580s up in there. My A2000s are in this server case. I um, wanted to revisit I've had a lot of people talk to me about how they're running passive intake systems and it's been working fine. And this is in reference to the, uh, the video I made about using negative pressure in a tent. Now maybe the, the use of the word negative pressure is what's causing all the confusion. I'm totally fine with passive intake. I've used it in the past. As a matter of fact, these 1660 supers, the fans are actually drawing air through, and I found that to work better in most cases. Uh, in the uh, Minor Dude case, they're set up in a push configuration, so I've still got air flowing from the cold aisle to the hot aisle. Um, and I had to on the A2000s because they were blower style cards, so they exhaust right out the back there. Um, so I, I've also observed that, that passive intake is, is very effective. Um, what I think a lot of people are misunderstanding is when I was doing this and I set up the air wall, I had to take off my crossbars because I'm, I'm now feeding five regs and I only have four crossbars. Uh, what I was trying to do was trickle in uh, cold air, just enough to keep my cards cool, and have the hot aisle get to about 90 degrees and get sucked out and fed up into my into my house. I was using this, this setup as... Uh, supplemental heating for my for my house in the winter time um, it's been working okay in the spring but it's starting to get hot um, and i would not have noticed this phenomenon had i not had the two different temp probes checking my hot aisle and cold aisle as you can see it's getting pretty dang warm it's i think in the mid 80s outside right now um, what i noticed was i would have this fan this is my 800 cfm fan i'd have that on about four or five and then I'd have the the intake system running at about nine or ten on the on the fan power. That's about half the CFM out of that six inch fan. I think it's good for about four and a quarter or something like that uh, as far as CFM. So I had them matched. I was trickling in cold air, warming it up through the cards, blowing the hot air into the house. When I started messing with the fan curve on the exhaust side, that's how I discovered because this setup was absolutely perfect in the winter. Uh, what I discovered was that as this fan ramped up, and it was way too aggressive at first, uh, for one or two degrees it would kick up another another notch on the speed, and it would start to pull the tent so hard into vacuum that the walls would cave in. And I would see the hot and cold aisles blend, and I thought, well, why is that? Well, obviously it's trying to equalize. I didn't have these separate hot and cold aisles because I didn't have a neutral pressure in the tent. Uh, I was beginning to draw it into vacuum, and the cold aisle was trying to mix with the hot aisle and the hot aisle mixed with the cold aisle as it's trying to equalize everything. I thought having lower pressure on this side was going to help pull the air through the system but it, it just didn't. Um, it just it ended up blending everything together uh, and it got me thinking. Um, in a vacuum you're, you're drying out air um, and in a, a deep enough vacuum you're going to have no air. Obviously we weren't getting there. Um, the the definitions can get blended between soft vacuum, full vacuum, and things like that. So I, cho I chose to call it negative pressure. Um, it, in, a, uh, in a passive intake system, I don't think you're really creating a measurable negative pressure. When I refer to negative pressure in a measurable sense, I'm talking about actual vacuum. And things you'll notice about uh, in a vacuum, you know, the temperature that water boils changes. We use this for AC and automotive applications. We draw the system into a vacuum, it boils all the water out and it removes all the air. Well, things that require air pressure, such as fan blades, um, just like jet wings in higher density environments, like cold environments, when they were training for uh, jet fighters in the Cold War, they would have to go out and, and relearn their their controls because the jet would be so much more responsive. Um, in high density air situations, the fan blade is using that to scoop the air and push it across the heat exchangers, which are also uh, reliant on, on dense air, drawing, drawing and extracting the heat off of the surface area of the, of the uh, uh, what's it called, heat exchanger, the fins, and, and removing that heat into the air, and then that's getting passed on. So 
if we're pulling the tent into vacuum, we're actually lowering the air density uh, and making things like fan blades and heat exchangers much less effective. Um, it, it all made sense when I could actually see it in real time. I can't re-demonstrate what I, what I had come across, and it was completely on accident. I had this system running perfect, but I was pulling the tent into vacuum, and I could see it on the, on the displays up there, and I could see it on the temps of the cars. Uh, passive intake's perfectly fine. When you start to see your tent walls caving in, it means your exhaust is overrunning the intake. Uh, so you need to open up vents, like I've done at the bottom, and get as much airflow through there as possible. You don't need to be forcing air in. Uh, passive intake is, is, like I said, completely fine, as long as the intake can keep up with the exhaust side. Um, and then the more exhaust, obviously the more airflow, so long as the intake can keep up. So what I think I'm gonna do now with this tent as we're getting into this heat, oh, and also another situation, with this door open, it's actually, I've got an 800 CFM draft running through my house, sucking all my air conditioning out. Um, so I've opened that window right there uh, just to let the fresh air in from outside. And then I have um, a cat door. Uh, I had to put a better cat door between the my kitchen and the basement door because as I was going up the stairs, you could feel it was, it was pulling the, uh, the flat for the cat door open and sucking out the AC out of my house that way. So I got a stronger door. It's a solid door with a real strong magnet. Um, and I'm probably gonna put a seal on that door too, so I'm not pulling any of the air out of my house. Um, so it, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on when you're, when you're playing around with airflow. Um, ideally, I'll have the basement sealed off. I'll be pulling in fresh air. I'm gonna have come up with a different way to get the air in here, but I think I'm gonna turn this entire unit around and use all these fans on the intake side, have that unit flip just like uh, against the door here, so I have absolutely no intake restriction. All those fans are gonna be uh, facing right as we, as we look at the door, drawing air into the tent, and then I'm gonna turn everything uh, as far as fans into exhaust. So that'll remain an exhaust, but I'm gonna make it a lot shorter and go directly out that window. And the air wall, I think I'm actually gonna put in the configuration it's in right now, I'm gonna put against this back wall here and have that also uh, working as exhaust. So the intake will be entirely done via the, the fans on the front of the rigs and the server cases and all that exhaust can be pulling out and then the, the uh, fresh air is going to be coming in from outside. I don't know if I'll have enough exhaust. I might need to have a little bit more. I figure each one of these fans, if I'm being conservative, is pushing, you know, 75 to 100 CFM of air into that tent. So we'll have to see how it works that's going to be my next step. I imagine some of it's going to not actually be getting sucked out. It might end up blowing out these open vents. Uh, but God help me, I, I'm not going to be pulling the AC out of here anymore if I can uh, do anything about that. So that's my next video. I just wanted to revisit the, uh, the negative pressure. I have a lot of, a lot of comments on that. Um, it's probably my bad. The, the definition, I, I didn't want to say vacuum, um, but really that's what we're trying to avoid inside an enclosed space, especially where uh, everything that I'm doing here, besides these couple of Vegas that are water-cooled, everything else is, is entirely dependent on air volume and air density. Uh, so we want to avoid vacuum in those situations. Passive intake is fine. I'm all for it. Uh, but don't restrict your intake enough to where your exhaust is actually pulling uh, everything inside of your enclosed space into negative pressure, quote, unquote, or vacuum. Okay, that should about wrap that up. Uh, be switching this around. It's going to get really hot this week, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be trying some things out with the tent, and I'll take you guys along with me. Stay undead.